Yu-Gi-Oh! is a Japanese manga and anime series created by Kazuki Takahashi. The manga was serialized in Shueisha's weekly Shonen Jump magazine from 1996 to 2004, while the anime adaptation first aired in Japan in 1998. The series has since become one of the most popular and iconic franchises in the trading card game genre. The story revolves around a young boy named Yugi Moto who solves an ancient Egyptian puzzle known as the Millennium Puzzle. Upon completing the puzzle, Yugi becomes the host for a spirit known as Yami Yugi or the Pharaoh. Yami Yugi possesses incredible gaming skills and a dark, more assertive personality. Together, Yugi and Yami Yugi face various challenges in the form of different games, with a particular emphasis on the Duel Monsters card game. Duel Monsters is a fictional trading card game within the Yu-Gi-Oh! series and serves as a central element in the storyline. The card game involves players summoning monsters, casting spells, and setting traps to defeat their opponents. Fast forward 3,000 years, Yugi Moto, a high school student, holds the Millennium Puzzle and becomes infused with ancient magic. At Domino High School, Yugi teaches his friend Joey how to play duel monsters, attracting the attention of Seto Kaiba, the top-ranked duelist. When Yugi's grandfather refuses to sell his rare Blue Eyes White Dragon card, Kaiba challenges him to a duel. Kaiba cheats and defeats Solomon, tearing the rare card in the process. Yugi, seeking justice, faces Kaiba in a high-stakes duel using his grandfather's deck. Against the odds, Yugi summons the unbeatable Exodia and defeats Kaiba. The defeated Kaiba is mind-crushed by Yugi, and Pegasus, the creator of Duel Monsters, learns of Kaiba's unexpected defeat. In class, Joey faces off against Teya and loses to her Breath of Light card. Feeling discouraged, Yugi takes Joey to his grandfather's game shop, where Grandpa agrees to train Joey. Meanwhile, the regional Duel Monsters championship takes place, with Weevil defeating Rex. Later, Pegasus challenges Yugi to a duel through a videotape, revealing his ability to predict Yugi's moves. The duel takes place in the Shadow Realm, and Yugi realizes that duel monsters might have ancient magical roots. As the duel unfolds, Pegasus captures Grandpa's soul and sets the stage for higher stakes challenges. Joey receives a desperate video from his sister Serenity, revealing her time is running out due to an undisclosed condition. Yugi and Joey receive invitations to Pegasus' Duelist Kingdom tournament with a $3 million prize. They reminisce about their friendship initiated by Yugi standing up for Joey against a bully. Sneaking onto the tournament ship, Yugi gives Joey a star chip to participate. Taya and Tristan join the journey. On board, they encounter Mai Valentine, an arrogant duelist. Weevil tricks Yugi, causing Joey to dive into the water to retrieve Yugi's Exodia cards. Distraught, Joey explains that the prize money could restore Serenity's eyesight. Yugi and his friends arrive at the Duelist Kingdom where Pegasus unveils the tournament rules. To compete for the prize, duelists need 10 star chips wagered in duels. The island features high-tech dueling arenas with holograms allowing duels to occur anywhere. These locations grant field advantages to certain monsters. Despite being a target due to his limited star chips, Yugi selflessly gives one to Joey. Weevil Underwood, the culprit behind Yugi's lost Exodia cards, challenges Yugi to a duel in the forest, where insect monsters gain a field power bonus. Yugi, despite facing rule complexities, outsmarts Weevil, destroying all of his insect monsters. However, Weevil places a cocoon of evolution on the field to even the odds. Meanwhile, My Valentine mocks their chances against the national champion who is determined to summon the powerful creature. Yugi seemingly stops the evolution prematurely. However, the Great Moth is summoned and My believes victory is inevitable. Undeterred, Yugi attacks, destroying Great Moth and winning the duel. The gang cheers and My, impressed, acknowledges Yugi's unexpected victory. Yugi claims Weevil's star chips, bringing him closer to rescuing his grandfather and facing Pegasus. Confident yet inexperienced, Joey challenges Mai Valentine to a duel, only to face her formidable Harpy Lady cards. Mai claims psychic abilities, unnerving Joey as she takes the lead. Closing his eyes, Joey realizes Mai's cards are perfumed, restoring his confidence. Joey plays Baby Dragon, but Mai, using Elegant Egotist, triples her Harpy's power. Employing Time Wizard's Time Roulette, Joey transforms his Baby Dragon into a Thousand Dragon, aging and weakening the Harpies. In a decisive move, Joey defeats Mai, earning a star chip and proving his strategic prowess. 
Yugi challenges Mako Tsunami, a sea duelist who employs a strategy of hiding his monsters in the sea, leveraging the environment to his advantage. When Yugi attempts to power up his Silver Fang using Mystical Moon, an unintended consequence raises the tide, strengthening Mako's monsters. Yugi's playing field shrinks, and with Mako's powerful fiend Kraken, the situation seems dire. Yugi uses Giant Soldier of Stone to destroy Mystical Moon, causing the tide to recede and exposing Mako's fish monsters. With victory secured, Mako willingly hands over his star chips. Mokuba flees Pegasus' castle, seeking duelists in the forest. Pegasus and cahoots with Kaiba Corp's corrupt directors, plans to defeat Kaiba and Yugi for control of the company. Mokuba challenges Yugi, blaming him for Kaiba's downfall. Meanwhile, Kaiba, cornered by Pegasus' henchmen, leaps out a window. Presumed dead, his deck is confiscated. Yugi, wagering his star chips, confronts Mokuba and convinces him to reconsider. Pegasus' henchman, Kimo, sabotages Yugi by discarding his star chips, forcing him to face a mysterious opponent, Seto Kaiba's ghost. The duel unfolds with Yugi confronting the ghost of his former rival. In the duel against Kaiba's ghost, Yugi faces the challenge of the blue-eyes white dragon without the aid of Exodia. Resorting to magical hats to temporarily conceal his dark magician, Yugi struggles to counter the mighty creature. Unbeknownst to them, the real Seto Kaiba, presumed dead after a fall, is alive and hacking into Pegasus' network to aid Yugi. Yugi manages to destroy one blue eyes, but the mimic swiftly summons another. Meanwhile, Seto succeeds in weakening the second blue eyes, but is interrupted before affecting the third. The imposter reveals his true form as a toad-like clown and plays the third blue eyes confidently. Inspired by Kaiba, Yugi resurrects a blue eyes with Monster Reborn and strengthens it using Mystical Elf, ultimately defeating the mimic with a mind crush. However, Kimo seizes the opportunity to abduct Mokuba during the chaos. Mai sets Joey up against Rex Raptor in a duel, stipulating that Yugi cannot intervene. Determined to prove himself, Joey struggles initially, losing key monsters to Rex's tactics. Rallying with Flame Swordsman, he faces imminent defeat until memories of friendship with Tristan inspire a united defense with the Swamp and Lava Battle Guards. Together, they fend off Rex's attacks. However, Rex reveals his ultimate weapon, a powerful dragon. Joey, lacking a direct counter, recalls the unused Time Wizard and, daringly, ages the dragon with Time Roulette, securing an unexpected victory. As Rex hands over his star chips, Yugi and his friends settle for the night. Meanwhile, Mai unexpectedly joins their group, forming an unlikely camaraderie with Taya. The evening takes a dark turn when Mai ventures alone and is attacked by a mysterious figure. Simultaneously, Yugi's classmate Bakura, harboring the evil spirit Yami Bakura, orchestrates a malevolent shadow game, jeopardizing their lives and the Millennium Puzzle. The mysterious figure who attacked Mai is Panic, one of Pegasus' eliminators who has taken all of Mai's star chips. Dueling Panic, Yugi risks all his star chips to help Mai. Panic goes to extreme lengths by betting not just on star chips, but also on his life. As Yugi faces the flamethrower-wielding threat, he devises a plan involving the Swords of Revealing Light to expose Panic's monsters. Simultaneously, Panic gears up to unleash the powerful king of Yamimakai. Yugi gains the upper hand by activating the Swords of Revealing Light, exposing Panic's monsters, and disrupting his offensive strategy. With Panic's monsters vulnerable, the Fallen Castle seals Yami Yugi's victory. In a fit of rage, Panic attempts to kill Yugi, but the Millennium Puzzle protects him. Yami Yugi retaliates with a decisive mind crush, banishing Panic and promising Mai an honorable duel in the near future. Seto Kaiba arrives in the Duelist Kingdom, determined to rescue his brother Mokuba from Pegasus. Refusing Yugi's assistance, Kaiba tests his new dual disc system on Joey. The advanced holographic simulator throws Joey off, and Kaiba dominates the duel with his blue eyes white dragon, defeating Joey easily. Recalling the NYC Intercontinental Tournament, Bandit Keith faced Pegasus in the final. Pegasus surprised everyone by selecting a kid from the audience to duel Keith. Following Pegasus' instructions, the kid defeated Keith, who discovered a note detailing all of his strategies and counters. Kaiba was stunned by Pegasus' display of power while Keith suffered humiliation. He sets off alone for the castle, leaving Yugi and his friends behind. Bandit Keith, accompanied by his henchmen, Bond, Sid, and Zigger, seeks revenge on Pegasus by entering the Duelist Kingdom tournament. 
Identifying Joey as an easy target, they kidnap him and bring him to a cave disguised as a graveyard. Joey wakes up to the intimidating sight of Bonza's skull skull-like face and Keith, refusing to duel personally, coaches Bonza to defeat Joey. Keith's strategy involves allowing non-zombie monsters to be destroyed, resurrecting them with Call of the Haunted to make them undead, indestructible, and increasingly powerful each turn. While Joey struggles against Bonds, Yugi Bakura, Tristan, and Taya find him, reminding him of his promise to Serenity and encouraging him not to give up. Yugi suggests using shield and sword, swapping the attack and defense of all monsters on the field, giving Joey the advantage to defeat Bonds' weakened zombies. Joey emerges victorious, securing eight starships, needing only two more to reach the finals. However, their exit is blocked by Keith's gang, who, after beating them up, claims their starships and secure a place in the finals. The friends are left trapped, contemplating their predicament in the cave. Trapped in a cave, Bakura's Millennium Ring guides Yugi and his friends towards Pegasus's castle. Emerging in a dueling arena, they face the enigmatic Paradox Brothers, who challenge them to a tag team duel with a twist. They must choose the correct door out of two, one leading to the castle and the other to an inescapable maze. In the duel, Doc summons Labyrinth Wall, turning the playing field into a maze where monsters move on spaces. Despite Joey's success in destroying Wall Shadow, the brothers introduce a riddle about truth and lies, adding a layer of confusion. Yugi and Joey navigate the maze, effectively countering traps and working together. However, the situation takes a dire turn when the brothers summon all three pieces of Gate Guardian, an immensely powerful monster with formidable attack capabilities. Meanwhile, Seto Kaiba confronts Kimo in his attempt to rescue Mokuba, defeating him but triggering an alarm that forces Kaiba to flee through the dungeons to reach his brother. Leveraging the maze to their advantage, Yugi and Joey power up their Black Skull Dragon, ultimately securing victory. However, the challenges continue as they confront the door riddle. Yugi outsmarts the brothers, ensuring they choose the incorrect door. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, Seto Kaiba, on the brink of rescuing Mokuba, faces a chilling ultimatum from Pegasus, defeat Yugi to reclaim his brother's soul. Reluctantly, Kaiba agrees to Pegasus' terms. As Yugi and Kaiba face off on the castle rooftop, Teo reflects on her friendship with Yugi and Joey, recalling moments of support and encouragement. Seto Kaiba, determined to duel Yugi, forces a match with a high-stakes wager. Both duelists initially appear evenly matched, but Kaiba unveils his trump card, the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, boasting a formidable 4,500 attack points. Kaiba also employs the Crush Card virus, decimating Yugi's monsters and restricting his options. Kaiba's strategic advantage deepens as he successfully fuses all three Blue Eyes White Dragons into the formidable Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Yugi, facing an uphill battle, finds inspiration in the support of his friends and memories of his grandpa. Yugi counters Kaiba's Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon by summoning Karibo and multiplying it into an impenetrable wall. Using Living Arrow and Polymerization, Yugi attempts to fuse the dragon with Mammoth Graveyard, causing it to decay and weaken. However, Kaiba revives one head of the Blue Eyes at full strength and forces a perilous situation by positioning himself on the rooftop's edge. Yugi is caught between risking Kaiba's life or sacrificing his own monster. In the end, Kaiba's ruthless tactics prevail and he emerges victorious. Yugi, disturbed by the consequences, resolves to quit dueling. Inside Pegasus's castle, Yugi, his friends, and Mai confront Bandit Keith, seeking revenge for the earlier trap. However, their attention turns to the duel unfolding between Seto Kaiba and Maximilian Pegasus. Kaiba initially gains the upper hand by destroying Pegasus' parrot dragon and countering his traps. Yet Pegasus, toying with Kaiba, suddenly shifts the tide of the duel. With swift and calculated moves, Pegasus steals Kaiba's blue eyes white dragon, enhances his dark rabbit, and neutralizes Kaiba's crush card strategy. Pegasus unleashes the formidable Toon World, rendering his monsters invulnerable. Even Kaiba's blue eyes white dragon falls victim to the whimsical transformation into a Toon version. Despite Kaiba's strategic efforts, Pegasus counters with Shrine Palace, further empowering his Toon dragon. As Kaiba draws upon the memory of Mokuba, he manages to defeat the Toon Blue Eyes with Shadow Spell. However, Pegasus cleverly exploits Mimikat, copying Kaiba's Crush Card to annihilate his remaining deck. With no options left, Kaiba succumbs to Pegasus, who callously seals his soul into a card. 
Yugi and his friends, appalled by the cruelty, demand answers from the unflinching Pegasus. The night before the Duelist Kingdom finals, additional requirements for dueling Pegasus are revealed. Glory of the King's Hand and Glory of the King's Opposite Hand. Yugi resolves Joey's dilemma by providing the required card, but Bandit Keith, lacking both cards, resorts to theft. Yugi experiences a haunting nightmare where his grandpa urges him to thwart Pegasus and unlock his Millennium Puzzle's power. Meanwhile, Tristan's group, suspicious of Pegasus' victory over Kaiba, stumbles upon a mysterious portrait. Pegasus intervenes, revealing a dark dueling ritual tied to the Shadow Realm and erases their memories. As Yugi faces Mai in the upcoming duel, he grapples with the unsettling blur between dream and reality. In the first Duelist Kingdom quarterfinal match against Mai Valentine, Yugi grapples with trust issues towards Yami Yugi after witnessing his ruthlessness against Kaiba. Deliberately restraining the spirit, Yugi falls behind as Mai capitalizes on his hesitation. Mai's Mirror Wall and Shadow of Eyes trap forces Yugi's monsters into attack mode. Yugi faces imminent defeat with only 300 life points left. Mai, recognizing Yugi's inner struggles and hesitation, emphasizes the value of facing fears and learning from defeats. Prompted by Mai's words, Yugi finally allows Yami to take control. Using strategic plays, Yugi turns the tide, countering Mai's mirror wall and resisting her attempts to seduce his monsters with Shadow of Eyes. Mai stages a formidable comeback with the Harpy Lady Sisters, but Yugi, determined to face his fears, stalls with Swords of Revealing Light until he draws the Black Luster Soldier Ritual. In a decisive move, Yugi summons the powerful monster, leading to Mai's surrender. The duel ends with mutual gratitude between the opponents. In Joey's Duelist Kingdom quarterfinal against Bandit Keith, the match takes a dramatic turn when Keith steals Joey's entry card. Mai intervenes by offering her own card, allowing the duel to proceed. Keith employs powerful machine-type monsters with resistance to magic, creating a challenging offensive strategy. Joey falls into a trap when attacking Zoa, which transforms into the even more formidable Metal Zoa. However, Joey surprises Keith with a cleverly laid trap, infuriating the bandit. Bandit Keith deploys his formidable Barrel Dragon against Joey, wrecking havoc on his monsters. However, Joey cleverly metalizes his Red Eyes Black Dragon, overcoming the Barrel Dragon's assault. Keith resorts to cheating, enhancing his slot machine card's power and stealing Joey's shield and sword. Unfazed, Joey outsmarts Keith by activating a trap to reclaim Time Machine, restoring his Red Eyes Metal Dragon to its previous state. With a strategic move, Joey defeats Slot Machine, but Keith protests, claiming Joey's entry card isn't his. Pegasus intervenes, exposing Keith's theft and cheating. Unwilling to accept defeat, Keith confronts Pegasus, who effortlessly dispatches him into the ocean. With Keith out of the picture, Yugi and Joey prepare for their impending duel. Yugi and Joey are facing off in the Duelist Kingdom semifinals, both determined to win for personal reasons. Joey wants to save his sister Serenity's eyesight, while Yugi aims to rescue his grandpa and the Kaiba brothers. Despite their strong friendship, they play seriously. Joey initially takes the lead, but Yugi makes a comeback. However, Joey gains the upper hand by summoning Black Skull Dragon, putting Yugi in a tough spot with only 550 life points left. Joey still has 750. As the duel intensifies, a storm begins to gather overhead. Yugi strengthens his Dark Magician and defeats Black Skull Dragon. However, Joey's clever trap turns Dark Magician into an old man. Surprisingly, this transformation unlocks a more powerful form, the Dark Sage, which gives Yugi the upper hand. Yugi ultimately wins emotionally torn, never forgetting his friendship with Joey. Now, the final challenge awaits, a duel against Pegasus himself. Yugi's high-stakes duel against Pegasus begins with the fate of his friends and loved ones hanging in the balance. Despite Yugi's determination, Pegasus effortlessly anticipates encounters as every move, leaving Yugi in a dire situation. Meanwhile, Tristan attempts to locate Mokuba and Kaiba but triggers an alarm, forcing him to flee. Meanwhile, Bakura overhears Croquet discussing the recapture of Mokuba and decides to search for the prisoner's soulless bodies. In the duel, Yugi's attempts to counter Pegasus' moves prove futile, especially when Toon World is activated, turning powerful monsters into nearly unstoppable Toon versions. Pegasus copies Summon Skull and inflicts damage through Gorgon's eye, tightening his grip on the duel. 
Meanwhile, Yami Bakura aids Tristan's escape using chain energy, but they face confrontation from guards at the top of a stairwell. As Yugi struggles against Pegasus's mind-reading abilities, Teo reminds him of the power within the Millennium Puzzle. Yugi and Yami Yugi devise a plan to switch minds each turn, preventing Pegasus from predicting their moves. The strategy confounds Pegasus, leading to a failed attempt to destroy Yugi's monsters. Yugi turns the tables with Living Arrow, destroying Toon World and the Gorgon's Eye. Mirror Force deals a devastating blow to Pegasus's monsters and life points. Meanwhile, Tristan and Yami Bakura navigate the dungeon, revealing Bakura's intention to use Mokuba's body. In the duel, Pegasus decides to escalate matters by initiating a deadly shadow game, pulling Yugi into the treacherous Shadow Realm. In the Shadow Realm, Yugi struggles against Pegasus' powerful monsters and the mental strain of the deadly shadow game. Pegasus introduces more formidable creatures, including the paralyzing Dark Eyes Illusionist and the monster absorbing Relinquished. The mind shuffle tactic keeps the Yugis safe, but Pegasus decides to overtax Yugi's mind by destroying his monster. Yugi collapses, leaving Yami Yugi vulnerable to Pegasus' mind-reading abilities. Furthermore, a deadly time bomb, Jigen Bakudan, threatens to explode and wipe out Yami Yugi's life points in two turns. Back in the real world, Tristan, Mokuba, and Bakura return to the duo platform, discovering the dire situation Yugi faces in the Shadow Realm. In the climax, Yami Yugi contemplates surrender, but a vision of Sullivan Moto reassures him that Yugi is still alive. As Pegasus attempts to read Yami Yugi's mind, Joey, Tristan, and Teya block him out forcefully. Yami Yugi turns the tide by summoning the Magician of Black Chaos, fusing Relinquished and the Thousand Eyes Idol into the powerful Thousand Eyes Restrict. With Multiply, a swarm of regenerating Karibos blinds the Restrict, allowing Yami Yugi to defeat Pegasus and save Yugi. Broken, Pegasus flees unnoticed while Yugi and his friends search for him and Yami Bakura plots to add Pegasus' Millennium Eye to his collection. Defeated and reflecting on his losses, Pegasus releases the imprisoned souls. Yami Bakura approaches him, correctly deducing Pegasus' motivations and challenges him to a shadow game within their mindscape. Due to Pegasus' previous defeat, Yami Bakura easily triumphs and claims the Millennium Eye. Yugi and his friends find Pegasus being carried away by guards, and in the tower, they discover Pegasus' diary. Teo reads the heartbreaking story of Pegasus' love for Cecilia, his quest to bring her back to life using Kaiba Corp technology and the Millennium Items, and the tragic circumstances of her death. Shadi appears, confronting Yugi and warning about a thief targeting the Millennium Puzzle. Shadi explores Yugi's mind, discovering two chambers, one for Yugi and another for Yami Yugi, a complex maze filled with traps. As Shadi leaves, he cautions Yugi to be vigilant against the impending threat to the Millennium Puzzle. In Domino, a new gaming shop named The Black Clown arrives, owned by the handsome Duke Devlin. Duke introduces a game he created called Dungeon Dice Monsters, DDM, similar yet distinct from Duel Monsters. Joey challenges Duke to a duel to win the attention of his ladies, but Duke emerges victorious. As punishment, Joey becomes Duke's slave for a week, enduring various humiliations. Yugi, frustrated by Joey's suffering, challenges Duke to a DDM match to free Joey. Duke agrees, but with a high stake. If he wins, Yugi must quit Duel Monsters forever, relinquishing his King of Games title to Duke. The duel between Yami Yugi and Duke Devlin in Dungeon Dice Monsters intensifies. Yami Yugi, at a disadvantage due to his dice selection, struggles against Duke's strategic use of low-level dice to summon multiple monsters. Duke dominates the game, continuously summoning creatures and advancing towards Yami Yugi's heart points. Although Yami Yugi manages to summon a high-level monster, Mighty Mage, and scores a successful attack, Duke counters with his stored magic crest, activating Blast Lizard's ability to eliminate Yami Yugi's low-level monster. With Duke's monsters closing in, Yami Yugi faces a challenging predicament, especially when Duke reveals himself as the inventor of DDM. The outcome remains uncertain as Yami Yugi battles against the game's creator. Yami Yugi, having lost one heart point, faces Duke's overwhelming advantage in the game. The duel intensifies as Duke exploits the game's mechanics, creating a path of red squares that traps Yami Yugi. Duke's powerful monster, Orgoth the Relentless, inches closer to victory, while Yami Yugi, with limited resources, must find a way to counter and survive Duke's onslaught. Yami Yugi faces imminent defeat with only one heart point remaining. 
Despite Duke's powerful monsters and strategic advantage, Yamayugi summons his ace monster, Dark Magician, in a last-ditch effort. Duke attempts to use Monster Cannon to finish the game, but Yamayugi cleverly employs magical hats, concealing Dark Magician and thwarting Duke's attack. With a final Mystic Box move, Yamayugi eliminates Duke's last heart point, securing a surprising victory. Joey and friends celebrate the remarkable turnaround, and Duke, humbled, reconciles with Yugi. As a gesture of goodwill, Industrial Illusion sends Duke a production contract for Dungeon Dice Monsters, solidifying their newfound friendship. In a school rush, Yugi and Teya encounter a mysterious fortune teller who offers to reveal Yugi's future. Intrigued, Yugi hands over his Millennium Puzzle, leading to its theft by the hooded stranger. Determined to retrieve it, Yugi follows arrows in an alley, discovering a dual arena. The thief, revealed as an underling controlled by an evil spirit, challenges Yugi to a duel for the puzzle's return. In the duel, Yugi faces the possessed bandit Keith, who cheats with the Millennium Ring's power. As the duel intensifies, Yugi's friends and Bakura close in, unaware of the impending danger. In the duel against Keith under Merrick's control, Yugi struggles to counter Zara the Mant, one of the game's strongest monsters. Yami Bakura intervenes, severing Merrick's control over Keith. However, Bakura shatters the Millennium Puzzle to assert his control over all Millennium items. A fire breaks out and Yugi, refusing to leave without the puzzle, collapses. Joey, Tristan, and Taya rescue him, salvaging the weakened Yugi and the puzzle. At the hospital, Yugi acknowledges a challenging journey ahead. The fate of the puzzle and the looming threat remain uncertain, setting the stage for the next chapter. Ishizu Ishtar, wielding the Millennium Necklace, arrives at Domino City with Egyptian artifacts. Yugi, discharged from the hospital, ponders recent events while Kaiba, occupied with Kaiba Corp, learns about an ancient Egypt exhibit. Ashiju invites Kaiba to a private museum viewing, revealing a tablet depicting Yugi as a pharaoh. Through visions, she unveils Kaiba's past life as a sorcerer. Ashizu discloses the theft of Egyptian god cards by the rare hunters and proposes a tournament to draw them out. Despite Kaiba's skepticism, she lends him Obelisk the Tormentor. Kaiba, determined to regain his top duelist status, agrees to organize the tournament. The spirit of the Millennium Puzzle, struggling with fading memories of ancient Egypt, seeks answers with Taya's help. Their quest is disrupted by the dancing duelist Johnny Steps, who challenges Taya to a Dance Dance Revolution match. Taya triumphs despite Johnny's attempts to cheat. Undeterred, Johnny proposes a rematch, but Yugi steps in, suggesting a Duel Monsters match instead. If Yugi wins, Johnny must leave Taya alone. If Johnny wins, Taya agrees to a date. Yugi with unmatched skill overwhelms Johnny. Learning Yugi's identity as the duelist who defeated Pegasus, Johnny concedes, ending his pursuit of Taya. As Yami, Yugi, and Taya explore the Domino Museum, they encounter a Shizu Ishtar, the bearer of the Millennium Necklace. Ashizu, a guardian of Pharaoh's memories, speaks of a looming battle and Yami's quest to reclaim his memories. While Yami questions her allegiance, Ashizu emphasizes his path to uncovering the past. In parallel, Seto tests his new dual disc at Kaiba Corp, showcasing the power of Obelisk the Tormentor. The city buzzes with anticipation as old and new rivals including Mai, Rex, Weevil, Mako, and the mysterious Espa Roba converge for Seto's Battle City Tournament. Seto announces the high-stakes competition where duelists vie for rare cards, setting the stage for an intense showdown. Joey learns about the Battle City Tournament and decides to enter to support Yugi. The clerk, aware of the rare hunter's interest in Joey's red-eyes black dragon, manipulates his ranking. After obtaining dual discs, Joey visits the hospital where he encounters rare hunters. Forced into a duel, Joey loses red-eyes to the rare hunter's rigged Exodia set. Beaten and determined, Joey recovers, vowing to reclaim his card. The next day, Yugi and his friends search for Joey, finding him at the beach. Tristan helps reconcile Joey with Serenity, and now resolute, Joey prepares for his quest to retrieve his treasured card. At the start of the Battle City Tournament, Yugi and Joey encounter the rare hunter known as Seeker. Joey challenges him to an anti-duel to win back his red-eyes black dragon, but Seeker insists on dueling Yugi for his Dark Magician. Yugi accepts with the condition that winning means Seeker must return Joey's card. As the duel commences, Joey tries to warn Yugi of Seeker's strategy, but Yugi refuses, valuing fair play. Meanwhile, Kaiba learns that Seeker, a rare hunter, hacked into Kaiba Corp's mainframe to participate. Despite Mokuba's concern, Kaiba allows the duel since he's just as eager to obtain the other Egyptian god cards. 
After defeating the rare hunter in a duel, Yami Yugi seizes Red Eyes Black Dragon from the imposter's deck and discovers that all the cards are counterfeit. Merrick, a mysterious figure, appears and addresses Yami Yugi as the Pharaoh, using his Millennium Rod to possess the defeated rare hunter. Merrick vows to destroy the Pharaoh with the help of one of his Egyptian god cards. Despite Yami Yugi's intention to return Red Eyes to Joey, Joey insists on Yugi keeping the card, planning to use the tournament to strengthen himself as a duelist for a future friendly duel with Yugi. Challenged by Espa, Joey faces initial challenges due to Battle City rules, unfamiliarity, and Espa's intimidation. Unbeknownst to Joey, Yugi observes the duel and detects Espa's cheating through psychic aid. Joey stages a comeback by exposing Espa's deception, revealing he's being fed information. Mokuba intervenes, allowing the duel to continue without cheating. Despite Joey's efforts, Espa gains control with Jinzo, posing a new threat to Joey's strategy. With defeat looming, Tristan initially deceives Serenity about Joey's success. However, Serenity discovers the truth and rallies behind him. Taya and Solomon Moto join the support, boosting Joey's morale. Against the odds, Joey activates Roulette Spider and triumphs. Espa, initially resistant, reveals his brother's influence and surrenders Jinzo and his locator card. The Roba brothers express pride in Espa, emphasizing unity despite the defeat. Joey, empowered by camaraderie, embraces the challenges ahead. In Battle City, Kaiba employs Obelisk the Tormentor to defeat a duelist harassing another. Merrick, aware of Obelisk, recalls stealing the Egyptian god cards and threatening his sister as Shizu for the final one. Yami Yugi, directed by Harlequin, enters a circus tent and vanishes into a mystic box, disrupting the Kaiba Corp transmission. In an underground chamber, he faces Arcana, who possesses a distinct Dark Magician. Dueling with locked ankles, both risk a buzzsaw slicing their legs upon life point loss. The winner gains a key to freedom, intensifying the perilous encounter within the mystical arena. Arcana reveals his past as a renowned stage magician with a fiance, Catherine. A tragic mishap during a trick left him scarred and despondent, leading to Catherine's departure. Merrick exploited Arcana's despair, promising Catherine's return in exchange for joining the rare hunters. Meanwhile, Kaiba tracks Yugi through his computer and his friends mobilize to locate him. Yami Yugi summons Dark Magician Girl, leveraging the strength of both players' graveyard to secure victory over Arcana's second Dark Magician. Yugi emerges triumphant, but Arcana attempting to break free using a hidden key falls prey to Merrick's illusions created with the Millennium Ron. As Yami Yugi reverts to Yugi, the young duelist breaks them free from their restraints. Merrick communicates through Arcana, revealing his motives and plans. Just as the revelation unfolds, Teya, Solomon Moto, Mokuba, and Tristan arrive, finally reuniting with Yugi. The duel between Joey Wheeler and Weevil Underwood intensifies as Weevil unveils a cunning strategy to introduce Parasite Parasite into Joey's deck. He exploits the situation to summon the perfectly ultimate Great Moth. With Insect Barrier sealing off Joey's attacks and Legul ready to inflict direct damage, Joey faces a daunting challenge. Meanwhile, Serenity, recovering in the hospital, remains unaware of her brother's predicament. Weevil revels in his scheme, leaving Joey with limited options and a formidable opponent to overcome. Joey employs strategic moves, activating Skull Dice and Graceful Dice to weaken and eventually defeat Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. Weevil retaliates with Insect Queen and a swarm of insect-type monsters. Despite the odds, Joey manages a comeback, summoning Gear Fried the Iron Knight. In a tense exchange, Joey dismantles Weevil's forces, ultimately triumphing with Gear Fried, destroying the final insect monster token. Joey claims victory, seizing Insect Queen, seizing Insect Queen, and two locator cards as Battle City proceeds. Yami Yugi faces Strings, who controls the formidable Slifer the Sky Dragon. After a battle that spans over three episodes, Strings ultimately decks out, granting Yami Yugi victory. He claims Slifer the Sky Dragon and a locator card. However, Merrick threatens Yami Yugi's friends, prompting him to postpone a duel with Kaiba to safeguard his companions from Merrick's sinister plans. Yami Yugi and Seto Kaiba unite to face two rare hunters, collaborating to overcome the formidable opponents. Meanwhile, Joey challenges Mako Tsunami, each possessing four locator cards, vying for a chance to bypass preliminary rounds with a duel. Also, Merrick Ishtar and Yami Bakura form an uneasy alliance, striking a deal to cooperate in pursuit of their objectives. Joey faces Mako in a decisive duel. Using fusion, strategic plays, and a touch of luck, Joey overwhelms Mako's aquatic forces. 
Mako's the legendary fisherman falls to Joey's strength in Panther Warrior, securing Joey's victory. As per Battle City rules, Joey gains the legendary fisherman, fortress whale, and two locator cards advancing closer to the Battle City finals. Loomis and Umbra face Yami Yugi and Seto Kaiba on a platform where defeat means being sucked into the Shadow Realm. Loomis starts by setting traps and Yami Yugi responds with the defensive Beta the Magnet Warrior. Umbra introduces Shining Abyss, boosted by Loomis's Mask of Brutality. Kaiba in turn summons Vorse Raider for an offensive move. Meanwhile, Joey, Teya, and Mokuba find themselves in a perilous situation as Merrick's Rare Hunters launch an attack, adding urgency to the ongoing duel on the glass floor. Teya makes a daring escape attempt, maneuvering through a warehouse room filled with stacks of boxes. However, her plan takes an unexpected turn as the boxes crumble beneath her weight, leading to a failed breakout. Later on, Mokuba, confined in the same room as Teya, shares valuable information about their captors. Meanwhile, Loomis and Umbra maintain control with Mask of the Accursed and the Masked Beast. Kaiba, summoning Blue Eyes White Dragon, faces their strategic onslaught. Yami Yugi employs Multiply to regenerate a Karibo wall, but Loomis counters with Mask of Dispel. The Masked Duo summons the Masked Beast and inflicts damage, but Kaiba uses Monster Reborn to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. Merrick attempts to possess Joey, Teya, and Mokuba using the Millennium Rod. In a daring escape attempt, Mokuba and Teya collaborate to climb through the warehouse skylight, but the Rare Hunters intervene, capturing Teya. Meanwhile, Merrick's dark magic takes hold of Joey, turning him into a puppet. Serenity, regaining her sight, must bide her time until nightfall for her own critical move. Meanwhile, Kaiba revives Blue Eyes White Dragon to strike down the Masked Beast, unveiled with lower attack due to Yami Yugi's strategic move. Loomis turns the tide with Pot of Greed and the unexpected appearance of Masked Beast Desgardius. Mokuba manages to escape and finds Yugi and Kaiba mid-battle. On the other hand, Teya is also in mind control of Merrick. Meanwhile, realizing his imminent demise, Loomis attempts to escape, succumbing to Merrick's possession. Merrick, displeased with Loomis's cowardice, claims both their souls. Yugi and Kaiba emerge victorious, obtaining precious locator cards and advancing in the Battle City Tournament. Under Merrick's control, Joey faces Yami Yugi in a perilous shadow game with both players chained above a watery abyss. The duel's stakes involve drowning the loser and any interference risks Teya's life. Merrick compels Yami Yugi to discard Slifer the Sky Dragon to prevent its loss in the sea. Yami Yugi, recognizing the potential connection to Joey, shuffles Red Eyes Black Dragon into his deck. Joey, using Rare Hunter's cards, duels with banned direct damage spell cards. Simultaneously, Merrick dispatches Odeon to capture Serenity and Tristan, exploiting Yugi's friends as potential leverage in his sinister plan. In a tense duel between Yugi and Joey, Yugi gained control with Beast of Gilfer after defeating Rocket Warrior and redirecting an attack with Magic Arm Shield. As Yugi's advantage solidifies, Joey's efforts with Panther Warrior fall short due to Yugi's strategic plays and the interference of D-Spell. Meanwhile, Tristan, Serenity, and Duke manage to overcome the Rare Hunters who are after them. With the defeated Rare Hunter revealing Yugi's location, the trio, aided by Mai, heads to the docks, potentially turning the tide in the ongoing duelist struggle against Merrick's sinister plans. In a critical moment, Merrick's control over Joey wavers as memories of his friendship with Yugi resurface. Despite Merrick's attempt to force Joey to play Meteor of Destruction and sacrifice himself, Joey breaks free from the mind control, choosing to save his friend instead. Serenity and Kaiba intervene to save Yugi, Joey, and Teya from the perilous situation orchestrated by Merrick, marking a triumphant end to the intense duel on the docks. Merrick manipulates Yami Bakura into entering the Battle City Finals, seeking to defeat the Pharaoh. Yami Bakura seizes control of Bakura's body, acquires a dual disc and locator card, and ventures to a graveyard where dual rumors circulate. His method of obtaining a ghostly deck remains unclear, raising speculation about its origin. Encountering Bond, Sid, and Zigger in Halloween costumes who acquire locator cards through intimidation, Yami Bakura challenges Bonds to a Shadow Realm duel, unimpressed by their tactics. Meanwhile, Yugi and Joey qualify for the Battle City Finals, prompted to proceed to the designated stadium after placing their locator cards on the dual disc as instructed. Seto Kaiba, along with Mokuba, awaits the arrival of Battle City finalists at the Grand Kaiba Craft 3 airship. Yugi, Joey, and Mai, along with their friends, join the gathering. 
The mysterious Merrick disguised as Namu raises suspicions and Bakura, despite injuries, surprises everyone by announcing his status as a finalist. Odian Ishtar adds to the confusion, claiming to be Merrick leading to a commotion. Mokuba introduces the airship and after a dramatic entrance by Ashizu Ishtar, the true finalist, the battleship takes off. The contestants, including Yugi's friends, settle into their designated rooms, with Yugi strategizing for the upcoming duels. The finalists, minus Joey, are called to the main hall to determine the order of the duels for the Battle City Finals. At the buffet in the main hall, Joey inquires about Bakura's swift qualification as a finalist. Bakura unsettlingly describes his brutal victory over Bonds, disturbing Joey. The random selection for the first quarterfinal duel results in Yugi facing Bakura set to unfold on a special arena atop the blimp. Spectators, including other duelists and passengers, gather to watch. Yami Yugi, sensing Yami Bakura's presence within Bakura, confronts him, demanding the revelation of his true identity. As the duel begins, Yugi seemingly gains the upper hand, swiftly depleting Bakura's life points. However, Bakura unveils the Dark Sanctuary, enveloping the arena in a foreboding atmosphere adorned with giant eyes, exposing Yugi to the manipulated situation. Yami Bakura invokes Destiny Board, initiating a chilling strategy where, at the conclusion of each turn, a letter is unveiled, with the goal of spelling out the word final within five turns, Bakura aims for victory. Despite Merrick's attempt to offer counsel, Bakura resists assistance. As the episode progresses, Destiny Board reaches the fourth letter. However, Bakura faces a dilemma as he has no remaining spaces for additional magic or trap cards unless he removes the Dark Door from the field. As Yami Yugi faces imminent defeat from Yami Bakura's Destiny Board, he summons his trump card, Slifer the Sky Dragon, for the first time. In a surprising turn, Odian, disguised as Merrick Ishtar, claims control over both Bakura and Yami Bakura, introducing chaos to the duel. Yami Bakura, urged by the real Merrick, releases Bakura, who takes over the duel in a confused and injured state. Yugi is torn between surrendering to aid Bakura or attacking with Slifer, risking further harm. Yami Bakura, prioritizing Bakura's safety, relinquishes control, allowing Yugi to win. Post-duel, Yami Bakura lets Bakura resume control, but Bakura falls into a comatose state. Despite Yugi's triumph, the Millennium Ring vanishes, now in possession of the mind-controlled Teya under Merrick's influence. After Yami Yugi's intense duel with Bakura, concerns for Bakura's well-being arise, prompting a plea to Kaiba to land the airship for medical assistance. Kaiba, unsympathetic, initially refuses but calls in a medical team after Serenity's fervent request. Meanwhile, Tristan and Duke embark on a reckless quest to find Bakura's missing Millennium Ring, resulting in a perilous situation. Yugi, adjusting his deck, encounters Shadi, who reveals the presence of all seven Millennium items and the three god cards on the ship. Shadi delves into Pegasus's past, recounting his quest in Egypt and the ominous consequences of meddling with the god cards. Shadi discloses the impending doom facing Merrick and Ashizu's determination to prevent it through the tournament. In the Battle City Finals, Joey faces Odian, still disguised as Merrick, fueled by a determination to redeem himself after Merrick's brainwashing. Odian displays a fake Millennium Rod to maintain the ruse. Concerns linger over Joey's well-being, especially from Serenity and Duke. Despite not having his prized Red Eyes Black Dragon, Joey relies on other potent cards like Jinzo, Insect Queen, and the legendary fisherman acquired from previous victories. Kaiba anticipates the duel, eager to observe the Winged Dragon of Ra in action and strategize for his own benefit. Joey is resolute to fulfill his promise to Yugi and thwart Merrick's manipulations. As Joey struggles with minimal life points, Odian advises him to forfeit, emphasizing the danger of facing the Winged Dragon of Ra. However, inspired by Serenity's encouraging words, Joey regains his confidence. In a revealing flashback, it's disclosed that Odian, abandoned in Egypt as an infant, was adopted by a compassionate Ishtar. To Odian's surprise and confusion, he draws the Winged Dragon of Ra, unaware that Merrick had covertly substituted a fake card to aid in the deception. Despite Merrick's insistence that Odian use the powerful card, Odian remains steadfast, believing he can win without it. Flashbacks shed light on Odian's upbringing, revealing that he was adopted into the Ishtar family to carry on the Tomb Keeper legacy, later replaced by Merrick as the heir. Odian's dedication to the family is evident, as he even tattoos his face in loyalty. Meanwhile, in the present, Joey and Yugi suspect Odian's true identity due to his honorable dual tactics, but Kaiba remains unconvinced. 
Merrick manipulates Odian into playing the Winged Dragon of Ra, promising him acceptance into the Ishtar family. However, the counterfeit card provokes the wrath of the real god, creating a storm. As Odian struggles with his sense of failure, lightning strikes him, shattering his Millennium Rod and confirming to Yugi that he isn't truly Merrick. Simultaneously, Joey is also struck by lightning, rendering both duelists unconscious with equal life points. Kaiba decides the winner will be the first to rise. In a dream spurred by encouragement from his friends, Joey finds the strength to stand and claim victory. Odian, revealing the true Merrick's identity, falls unconscious, allowing Yami Merrick to take over against his will. After Joey's duel, a misunderstanding with Mai arises when Joey lies about not seeing her in the dream he had during his unconscious state. Mai assumes Joey doesn't care about her, causing tension between them. The subsequent duel features Mai against Yami Merrick. Before Yami Merrick can harm Odian, he is interrupted and drawn into the duel. Once the match begins, Yami Merrick transports it to the Shadow Realm, and despite Yami Yugi's warnings, Mai dismisses the danger. The stakes are high as each time a monster is destroyed, the owner loses fragments of their memory. Tragically, Mai forgets about her friend Teya. As the Shadow game progresses, the duelists continue to suffer memory loss with each monster destroyed. Mai loses memories of Joey, and Merrick shows disregard for the memories of his former rare hunter allies. Mai's recollections delve into her lonely childhood, revealing that duel monsters, particularly her harpy ladies, became her solace in a life marked by frequent relocations. Struggling against Merrick's curses, Mai receives encouragement from Yami Yugi, who harnesses the power of his Millennium Puzzle to inspire her to victory. Mai manages to take control of Merrick's powerful The Winged Dragon of Ra, but the Divine Beast becomes locked in a sphere. Yami Merrick, asserting his control over the Winged Dragon of Ra due to his knowledge of the ancient scriptures, chains Mai to the Sacred Stone of Oja, immobilizing her. Despite Merrick's dominance, Joey bravely climbs onto the dueling field to free Mai. In a touching moment, he manages to remind her of their connection, even though her memory has been compromised. Yami Yugi joins the effort but is knocked out by an attack. Unfortunately, Mai loses the duel and Merrick condemns her to the Shadow Realm. In a cruel fate, Mai's mind becomes trapped in a giant hourglass, destined to gradually forget all her friends. In the Battle City quarterfinals, Kaiba swiftly takes the lead by summoning Vorce Raider and eliminating Ashizu's Keldo. However, Ashizu retaliates with Mudora, boosted by Sword of Dagra. Kaiba employs strategic cards like Shrink and Crush Card to turn the tide, destroying Ashizu's monsters. Ashizu then activates Swords of Revealing Light to stall Kaiba's attacks. As the duel progresses, Kaiba prepares for a powerful move, drawing Obelisk the Tormentor and landing a direct hit with Dark Gremlin, placing Ashizu in a precarious position for the next turn. In a critical moment against Ashizu, Kaiba activates Virus Cannon, attempting to disrupt her strategy. Ashizu counters with Exchange of the Spirit, reshuffling the decks and leaving Kaiba with a limited card pull. Ashizu regains control with Kelbeck and Zolga, attacking Kaiba's life points. Kaiba cunningly sets up for a powerful move by activating Soul Exchange and accumulating Tribute Fodder. Ashizu, unaware of Kaiba's vision and change in strategy, believes she holds the advantage. However, Kaiba shifts tactics using Silent Doom to revive Gadget Soldier and Tribute Summoning Blue Eyes White Dragon, ultimately securing victory against Ashizu. As Kaiba discovers his ability to read the ancient language of the Winged Dragon of Ra, Yugi and friends visit the recovering Mai. Ashizu recounts her family's history, revealing the Tomb Keeper's duty to guide the pharaoh's memories. In a flashback, Merrick's forbidden excursion into the outside world leads to a tragic incident and Yami Merrick surfaces. Yugi grapples with the consequences of his revival, and Ashizu emphasizes their responsibility to save Merrick. Ashizu passes the Millennium Necklace to Yugi, stating her role as a Tomb Keeper is complete. Meanwhile, Bakura regains the Millennium Ring, and Yami Bakura challenges Merrick to a high-stakes shadow game for the Millennium Item's possession. Yami Bakura initiates with Fearful Earthbound and Goblin Zombie, but Yami Merrick counters with Drilago, inflicting damage and dismantling Fearful Earthbound. Yami Bakura summons Jernia and deploys multiple destruction, leading to both players drawing and discarding cards. Yami Bakura tributes Gurnia for Puppet Master resurrecting key monsters. Utilizing Dark Designator and Exchange, Yami Bakura seizes the Winged Dragon of Ra from Yami Merrick. The game intensifies as the players lose a portion of their body with decreasing life points, unveiling the dark powers of Ra. 
Yami Merak employs vengeful bog spirit to stall Yami Bakura's assault. Undeterred, Yami Bakura masterfully summons the Winged Dragon of Ra with strategic tributes, yet Yami Merak counters with joyful doom, neutralizing Ra's threat. Yami Merak resurrects Jolago to dismantle Puppet Master. Unfazed, Yami Bakura resurrects the Winged Dragon of Ra with formidable power. In a daring move, Yami Merak activates Ra's instant attack and point-to-point -point transfer effects, sacrificing most of his life points to secure victory and vanquish Yami Bakura's forces. The Battle City Tournament returns after a whole lot of filler episodes. In an intense four-way free-for-all duel to determine the Battle City Tournament semi-final pairings, the turn order is set. Seto Kaiba leads with Masked Beast Desgardius, followed by Merrick Ishtar with Lakunga, Yugi Moto with Feral Imp, and Joey Wheeler with Swordsman of Landstar. Kaiba, driven by the desire to face Yugi and possess two Egyptian god cards, strategically plans his moves. Yugi, torn between rivals, initially waits to decide but eventually chooses to duel Joey, honoring their promise. Meanwhile, Joey seeks revenge against Merrick to win back my soul. Merrick, indifferent about opponents, aims to wreak havoc. The duel tower's rising chairs heighten the stakes as each duelist battles for victory. In the climax of the duel, Yami Merrick relentlessly targets the vulnerable Joey. Attempting to turn the tide, Joey triggers a trap against Yami Merrick's monster. However, Kaiba intervenes, exploiting a card to weaken Joey's monster and allowing Yami Merrick to destroy it. The turning point arrives when Joey counters with Yami Merrick's own card, redirecting the damage to himself and sacrificing his own life points. Seizing the opportunity, Kaiba deals the final blow, reducing Joey's life points to zero. Kaiba's victory not only pairs him with Yugi in the semifinals, but also sets up a fierce showdown between Yami Merrick and a determined Joey, driven by the desire to save Mai. In the intense semi-final duel between Joey and Merrick, the stakes are raised as Merrick infuses the shadow game with heightened consequences. Dark energy strings connect Merrick and Joey to every monster they summon, amplifying the pain they feel as their creatures are destroyed. The destructive fate of the monsters directly correlates to the physical well-being of their respective owners. As the duel between Joey and Yami Merrick intensifies, Merrick employs the relentless help Omer to deplete Joey's hand, while Joey makes a strategic comeback by reviving Jinzo to neutralize Merrick's traps. However, Merrick introduces the formidable Lava Golem to the field, a powerhouse with an unusual cost. Its destructive presence on Joey's side inflicts considerable damage. Joey utilizes an ingenious combo involving graceful dice to power up Plasma Eel and summons his formidable monster Guilford the Lightning, wiping out Merrick's field. However, Merrick counters with Monster Reborn to revive the Winged Dragon of Ra and transforms it into the formidable Egyptian God Phoenix. Though Yugi and friends initially question Merrick's move, the true nature of Ra begins to unfold. Despite the intense damage incurred during the Shadow Game, Joey miraculously survives. However, as the duel progresses, Joey's physical condition worsens, leading to his collapse before he can make a final attack. With Joey unable to continue, Yami Merrick claims victory by default. In the aftermath, both duelists suffer the repercussions of the Shadow Game, with Joey resisting banishment to the Shadow Realm but requiring medical attention, while Merrick, despite winning, faces the physical toll of the intense duel. In the holographic arena of an ancient Roman Colosseum, Yami Yugi and Seto Kaiba engage in the second duel of the Battle City semifinals. With the unique twist of Spell Sanctuary allowing face down spell cards to be used as quick play spells. As the duel unfolds, the clash intensifies as X Head Cannon and Y Dragon Head combine forces against Yugi's defenses, setting the stage for a strategic exchange with the spell Exchange and the dramatic acquisition of Slifer the Sky Dragon. Meanwhile, in Joey's dream duel following Duelist Kingdom rules, he faces an unnamed kid. After an exchange of monsters, the kid gains an advantage by fusion summoning Metal Dragon. Despite Joey's attempt to turn the tide with shield and sword, the kid's strategic play using castle walls allows Metal Dragon to triumph over Joey's monsters, leading to Joey's defeat. Meanwhile, Seto Kaiba fusion summons Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Yugi activates Double Spell to harness Seto's Monster Reborn and Polymerization, resurrecting Buster Blader and fusion summoning Dark Paladin. With Dark Paladin on the field, Yugi gains a formidable ally against Kaiba's dragons. Yugi then plays the fusion Wave Motion, allowing Dark Paladin to unleash a sweeping attack, annihilating all three Blue Eyes White Dragons, and securing Yugi's victory with Kaiba's life points reduced to zero. 
Meanwhile, Joey wakes up from this slumber. In the aftermath of Yamiyugi's decisive victory over Seto Kaiba, tensions run high as Kaiba, refusing to accept defeat, challenges Joey Wheeler to a duel for third place. Seto kicks off the duel by summoning Ryukushin Powered and sending two cards. Undeterred, Joey brings out Gear Fried the Iron Knight and attacks, but Kaiba activates Shrink to weaken Ryukushin Powered and minimize the damage. The tide turns when Kaiba triggers Crush Card, decimating Joey's hand, field, and deck, leaving him with a severe disadvantage. Undaunted, Joey summons Swordsman of Landstar and utilizes Graceful Dice to boost its attack, ultimately destroying Kaiba's Lejin the Mystical Genie of the Lamp and making a significant comeback. In the ongoing duel between Seto Kaiba and Joey Wheeler, Tristan and Duke offer their unwavering support to Joey while also expressing concern about Yugi and Teya's prolonged absence. Meanwhile, atop the dual tower, Ashizu informs Yami Yugi that Merrick's dark side is weakening, but defeating him is imperative, warning of dire consequences if Yugi fails. Teo regains consciousness and joins Yugi, unaware of the events that transpired. In the duel against Joey, Kaiba emerges victorious and contemplates destroying the island. Ashizu urges him to witness the final duel and assist Yugi against Yami Merrick. Kaiba, initially resistant, is persuaded by Mokuba's heartfelt plea to save the island instead of causing further destruction. As the climactic showdown begins, Kaiba hands Yami Yugi Fiend Sanctuary, a crucial card he had planned to use against Yami Merrick, setting the stage for a critical turning point in the Battle City Tournament. In this intense shadow game between Yami Yugi and Yami Merrick, their life force mirrors the deterioration of their respective hosts, Yugi Moto and Merrick Ishtar. Yami Merrick swiftly summons Vampiric Leech, inflicting direct damage to Yugi using its effect. The exchange of cards occurs with exchange, leading to Yami Yugi summoning the trio of Queen's Knight, King's Knight, and Jack's Knight. Yami Merrick employs strategic moves with Jurigato and Card of Sanctity. Yami Yugi responds by tribute summoning the formidable Slifer the Sky Dragon, setting the stage for a fierce confrontation with Merrick's Egyptian god Phoenix, the Winged Dragon of Ra. Yami Merrick dramatically special summons the Winged Dragon of Ra in Phoenix mode, successfully destroying Slifer the Sky Dragon. Yami Merrick utilizes Zombie's Jewel to acquire Monster Reborn from Yugi's graveyard, leading to Yami Yugi setting Fiend Sanctuary. Yami Merrick revives the Winged Dragon of Ra again, significantly boosting its stats by sacrificing his life points. However, Yami Yugi strategically counters with Fiend Sanctuary, summoning Metal Fiend tokens to absorb Ra's attack and redirect the damage to Merrick. Yami Yugi then surprises Merrick with the powerful tribute summon of Obelisk the Tormentor, turning the tide of the intense shadow game. The battle continues for another three episodes, so I will spare you the details and get to the final moments. Yami Yugi, with only 700 life points, initiates a game-changing move by unleashing Ragnarok. This powerful spell banishes all monsters from Yami Merrick's hand, deck, and graveyard, including the colossal The Winged Dragon of Ra. The banishment significantly weakens Yami Merrick and facilitates the re-emergence of the real Merrick who, aided by Odin, begins to regain control over his malevolent alter ego. Acknowledging the overwhelming odds, Merrick surrenders the duel, sealing Yami Merrick's fate and banishing him once and for all. The intense shadow game concludes with Yami Yugi emerging victorious and Merrick breaking free from the clutches of his dark alter ego. As the Battle City Tournament concludes and the Alcatraz Tower faces imminent destruction, Kaiba and Mokuba are found in the control room. Kaiba, reflecting on his past and duels, activates the self-destruct sequence. With time running out, Duke and Bakura arrive, revealing the blimp's engine cannot be fixed. A helicopter becomes their last hope. As Alcatraz crumbles, Kaiba appears in a blue-eyes jet, escaping separately. On the mainland, Ashizu and Merrick express gratitude, bidding farewell. Mai departs, challenging Yugi again. The next day, Yugi offers Red-Eyes Black Dragon to Yami, signifying unity. Yugi sneaks out to face Joey in a sunrise duel, concluding Battle City's intense saga. <laughs> Bakura Ryo is being pursued by Yami Bakura's sinister voice and another mysterious voice, indicating his role in a dark game and the need for an eighth key in the Pharaoh's world of memories. Possessed, Ryo is compelled to fulfill this ominous destiny. In a flashback to the 1960s, a younger Solomon Moto navigates treacherous traps in the tomb of the nameless Pharaoh to retrieve the Millennium Puzzle. Each room presents a deadly game, from needle-spitting snake statues to a maze over a dark pit. Solomon faces challenges, loses companions, and earns the pharaoh's assistance. In the present, Solomon recounts his journey to Yugi, who prepares for a trip to Egypt to unlock Yami Yugi's memories. 
Solomon requests to see the god cards, but Yugi declines. As Yugi sleeps, Weevil and Rex attempt theft, only for Yami Bakura to intervene. Yugi confronts Bakura, realizing he's talking to Yami Bakura, who reveals knowledge of the Tablet of the Pharaoh's memory in Kol Elna. Yami Bakura challenges Yami Yugi to the ultimate dark game in the world of memories. Seto Kaiba, working late, faces Yami Bakura in a surprise duel, experiencing unsettling visions. Yami Bakura, using Diabound Colonel, steals Blue Eyes White Dragon's attack. As dawn breaks, Yami Bakura departs, leaving Kaiba the Millennium Eye. Determined not to let Yugi go alone, his friends join him on a plane to Egypt. Yugi and his friends arrive in Cairo, Egypt, where the Ishtar family takes them to an ancient tomb holding the Tablet of Lost Memories. Taya gives Yugi a cartouche pendant, encouraging the pharaoh to rediscover his name. Yami Yugi uses the pendant and his god cards to transport to the world of memories along with Yami Bakura. In the past, the pharaoh experiences his coronation and faces a millennium trial against an assassin with the assistance of the sacred guardians and their millennium items. Meanwhile, Yugi and his friends meet Shadi, who reveals the pharaoh's destiny to relive his ancient past and play the ultimate dark game. Thief King Bakura infiltrates the Imperial Palace, bringing stolen trinkets and Aknam Kanan sarcophagus. The priests attempt to judge him, but the evil within Bakura, Diabound, proves immeasurable. Despite the attempt to seal it, Diabound frees itself. Yugi and his friends, guided by Shadi, enter the Millennium Puzzle to find the Pharaoh. Meanwhile, in the past, Bakura accuses Aknam Kanan of tyranny and reveals the Dark World's connection to the Millennium Items. A battle ensues between the priests and Bakura, culminating in the pharaoh's summoning of Obelisk the Tormentor to counter Diabound's burst stream of destruction. The clash between the pharaoh's Obelisk the Tormentor and Bakura's Diabound ends in a draw, and Bakura escapes on horseback. Seto Kaiba, using the Millennium Eye given by Yami Bakura, witnesses the events and heads to Cairo. Yugi and friends, guided by Shadi, continue their quest to find the door to the pharaoh's past. Meanwhile, Mahad, one of the pharaoh's sorcerers, reveals his true power and faces off against Bakura, setting the stage for a dark confrontation. Bakura's Diabound evolves due to his growing hatred, while Mahad summons an evolved version of Illusion Magician resembling Dark Magician. The battle escalates with powerful attacks and traps. Meanwhile, the pharaoh senses the turmoil and rushes to the scene. Mahad sacrifices himself, transferring his spirit into Dark Magician, who emerges and defeats Diabound. Mahad, now Dark Magician, is sealed inside a tablet. In the present, Yugi and friends, guided by Shadi, make progress in transcending the Pharaoh's realm through the Millennium Puzzle. Yugi and his friends, now in the Pharaoh's memory world, discover they are invisible to the people of ancient Egypt. Meanwhile, Pre Seto, now aware of Bakura's threat, implements measures to hunt for criminals with strong demoniac beasts. Seto encounters Kisara, a girl with unusual features, and senses a powerful force within her. As Yugi and his friends try to communicate with the pharaoh, they encounter Bobasa, a spirit who can interact with the physical world. Thief King Bakura infiltrates the palace confronting Akhenaten, while Seto discovers a connection with Kasara from his past. Thief King Bakura overpowers Akhenaten, intending to make him his servant using the Millennium Ring. The pharaoh, alerted by a village attack, witnesses the struggle. Bakura escapes using Diabound, prompting the pharaoh to summon Slifer the Sky Dragon. In a flashback, Akhenaten orchestrates the creation of the Millennium Items at Kolelna's cost, secretly saving them from a destructive force. Secretly saving them from a destructive force. Returning to the present, Bakura challenges the pharaoh, threatening the city. As their monsters clash, Bakura demands the Millennium Puzzle surrender. The pharaoh seemingly agrees but counters, leading to a stalemate until Preseto's duos intervenes for assistance. Pre Seto, Kareem, and the Pharaoh confront Thief King Bakura, leading to a battle in the city. Bakura strategically retreats, causing chaos and fires. Seto's duos and Kareem's Helamai join the pursuit, but Diabound surprises and destroys Helamai, draining Kareem's life energy. The Pharaoh battles Bakura until Akhenaten, under Bakura's influence, paralyzes Slifer the Sky Dragon, resulting in the Pharaoh's weakened state. Yugi and friends arrive, restoring the Pharaoh's energy. The Pharaoh summons the Winged Dragon of Ra, countering Bakura's attacks. However, Bakura manipulates time, rewinding events and seizing the Millennium Puzzle, seemingly leading to the Pharaoh's demise. Pre Seto defends Kisara in the arena, summoning duos to cut the chains. Summoning duos to cut the chains, saving them from the criminals. Kisara harnesses the White Dragon's power, annihilating the threat. Despite Akhenaten's reassurance, Seto insists the Pharaoh is alive. 
Meanwhile, Thief King Bakura places the Millennium Puzzle and Ring into the Millennium Tablet, summoning Zork, who demands the eighth key, the Pharaoh's true name. The Pharaoh awakens in a cave, experiencing a vision of his past and receiving a warning from a mysterious figure named Hassan about Zork's imminent resurrection. Kaiba arrives in Egypt to investigate the Millennium Tablet. Ashizu informs him that the original Tablet of Lost Memories is safely returned while the museum houses a replica. Shada informs Seto of the Pharaoh's location in Koelna. Inside a tomb, Bakura reveals the grim history of the Millennium Items. The Pharaoh learns of his father's remorse and confronts Bakura, leading to a fierce battle with Diabound. Bakura, using the Millennium Scale, fuses Diabound and Alushu into a stronger entity. In a dramatic turn, the Pharaoh sacrifices himself, allowing the spirits to be absorbed, and King Akhnamkanan, within his heart, intervenes to protect him. As a result, Diabound's ceiling tablet is shattered, marking a crucial victory for the Pharaoh and his allies. Yugi and his friends navigate the royal palace in their quest to uncover the Pharaoh's real name within the world of memories. Meanwhile, the aftermath of the battle in Kol Elna reveals Bakura's sinister plan to manipulate time and control the fate of the past. Yami Yugi awakens in a shadow game orchestrated by Yami Bakura, who possesses three powerful hourglass tokens. As time freezes for most characters, Akhnaden transforms into the Great Shadow Magus, seeking to fulfill his wish for Seto to rule as Pharaoh. The mysterious entity Hassan intervenes, deflecting an attack and disrupting Bakura's plans, but the threat of Zork's resurrection looms as the hourglass ticks down. Meanwhile, Seto Kaiba in the real world discovers the Tablet of Lost Memories projection. Akhnaden reveals his motivations, driven by jealousy and resentment, unveiling a history of manipulation and bloodshed. Hassan intervenes to protect the Pharaoh. Seto's internal struggle unfolds, with Akhnaden tempting him to embrace the dark. Kisara senses the turmoil. Yami Bakura exploits Kaiba, extracting his energy to resurrect Thief King Bakura within the dark RPG. Thief King Bakura, now revived, attempts to sway priest Seto to join Zork. Akhnaden opens a dark portal, throwing Seto in it and following suit. Seto, awakened in the real world, encounters Kisara. Back in Kolelna, the priests face challenges from Bakura's summoned monsters. Isis suffers a fatal blow, prompting Karim to transfer his remaining Ba to Shada, empowering the two-headed jackal warrior to eliminate the threat. In the Valley of the Kings, Yugi and friends navigate traps in an ancient tomb, discovering a secret passage. Akhnaden attempts to convince Priest Seto to embrace his fate as the Dark King. Kisara and Seto Kaiba arrive, and Akhnaden summons obstacles, forcing Seto to duel Kisara. Despite Kisara's sacrifice, Akhnaden's control over Seto is broken. In the Shadow RPG, Yami Bakura reveals Tristan as his pawn. The group finds hieroglyphics revealing the Pharaoh's name. Tristan, manipulated by Bakura, challenges Yugi to a duel monsters match while Zork's impending resurrection looms. Zork Necrophage is resurrected, merging with Thief King Bakura and Diabound. The Millennium items scatter as chaos ensues. In Kolelna, Zork overpowers the defenses and Preseto takes command. However, Zork decimates the forces, forcing a retreat. In the Dark RPG, the game and the real world intertwine, alarming Yami Yugi. Yami Bakura revels in the chaos, intending to resurrect Zork in both realms. The priests summon their Ka, but Zork's ruthless counterattack claims Shada's life as he sacrifices himself to save the Pharaoh. With the Pharaoh's weakened state, Isis, Mana, and Spiria set out to retrieve the Millennium Items. They find them at Kolelna, and Isis replenishes her life force with the Millennium Necklace. Zork detects the items and attacks, leading to Isis sacrificing herself to create a diversion. Mana, holding the items, is intercepted by Simon Moran, who summons Exodia the Forbidden One. Exodia briefly challenges Zork, but is ultimately destroyed, and Simon perishes. Mana returns with the items, replenishing the Pharaoh's life energy in their desperate struggle against Zork. Yami Yugi and Yami Bakura, now inside the Dark RPG, witness the unfolding battle between the Pharaoh and Zork. As the solar eclipse intensifies, Zork overpowers the Divine Beasts, turning them into stone statues. The Pharaoh, losing part of his Ba, faces the relentless might of Zork. The battle for Egypt's fate enters a dire phase, casting a shadow over the land. Inside the Millennium Puzzle, Shadi revives Hassan and confronts Zork. The Pharaoh, Seto Kaiba, and Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon fuse into Dragon Master Knight, attacking with Galaxy Crusher. Despite the destructive force, Zork stands unaffected. Shadi, wielding the Millennium Key and Scale, intervenes, sacrificing Hassan to stall Zork. 
Meanwhile, Yugi and his friends approach the scene. Zork dismisses the notion of light overcoming darkness, but the pharaoh stands resolute. As Zork attacks, Shadi's sacrifice paves the way for the approaching light of hope. Facing defeat, the pharaoh, weakened and despairing, is confronted by Zork's revelation of humanity's self-destructive nature. Taya triggers a plan to reveal the pharaoh's name using hieroglyphics. The hieroglyphics appear on the pharaoh's cartouche, unveiling his name, Atem. Seto, Yugi, and friends combine forces, reviving the three gods to form the creator god of light, Harakti. Together, they vanquish Zork and Yami Bakura. The world returns to normal, and Atem embraces his identity, entrusting Seto, entrusting Seto with Egypt's future. Atem bids farewell, departing with Yugi and friends. Pre Seto accepts his role as the new pharaoh, honoring Atem's legacy. Arriving at the Temple of the Realm of the Dead, Yugi and his friends, including Kaiba, prepare for the pharaoh's final trial. Ashizu reveals the conditions to open the door of the Realm of the Dead, involving placing the seven millennium items in the tablet and announcing the name of the pharaoh. Atem decides to fulfill his destiny, and Ashizu guides them to the temple. As night falls, tension rises as Yugi and Kaiba argue about who should face the pharaoh in the ultimate duel. Eventually, Yugi resolves to challenge Atem with his own deck. The group arrives at the temple, and Yugi reflects on the enduring bond with the pharaoh before the decisive duel begins. Yugi, with the support of his friends, faces the pharaoh, both determined to win for different reasons. In a surprising move, Yami summons Obelisk the Tormentor, leading to a dramatic turn in the duel. Despite the challenges, Yugi remains resilient, showcasing his determination to prove himself in this face-to-face -face encounter with the pharaoh. As Yugi faces the challenge of dueling against the three Egyptian god cards, his friends express doubts about his chances. Seto Kaiba dismisses Yugi's ability and leaves, declaring that Yugi is incapable of defeating the gods. However, Yugi asserts his determination to win and prove his skills. Yami Yugi provides Yugi with a pep talk, emphasizing self-confidence and the strengths they've gained from each other. The duel continues and Ashizu predicts that Yugi may turn the tide, speculating that Yugi and the pharaoh represent opposite sides of the same soul. Seto Kaiba expresses astonishment at Yugi's strategy and acknowledges his impressive skills, admitting that Yugi is indeed the king of games. Ashizu reflects on the significance of the duel, emphasizing Yugi's role in saving the pharaoh's spirit. The duel intensifies as Atem's influence on fate becomes apparent, surprising onlookers. Joey explains to Taya the importance of the duel and the growth it signifies for both Yugi and the Pharaoh. In the final stages of the duel, Yugi employs a powerful combo using Card of Sanctity and Silent Magician level 0. Yugi employs a powerful combo using Card of Sanctity and Silent Magician, drawing 5 cards for both players and boosting his magician's attack to 3500. With this advantage, Yugi defeats Atem's Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. Atem's attempt to revive Cypher the Sky Dragon is thwarted by Yugi's gold sarcophagus. Yugi, now in control, attacks Atem directly with Silent Magician level 5, securing his victory. Atem's spirit is freed, and despite the sorrow of parting, Yugi and his friends bid him farewell. The Millennium items are sealed away, marking the end of an era and the series as well. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.